Hey guys, welcome to Boxing Squared for boxing news and views from around the internet. Three British prospects return on three shows this weekend. Fabio Wardley taking on Eric Molina on the White Pavilion undercard. Then you have two Frank Warren cards with Nathan Gorman appearing on one and David Adelaide, the young prospect, on the other. So we'll start, though, with Fabio Wardley. So he is facing Eric Molina, the former two-time title challenger, who's really faded at this point, is pretty much a husk of what he used to be. And that used to be never was that great. And he lucked into a couple of title shots earlier in his career, one against Anthony Joshua, one against Deontay Wilder. Arguably, I think for many, he probably didn't deserve them, but it is what it is at this point. So I see this as a resume builder for Fabio. Wardley. Not a real stern test. He's a guy at this point who's um, 38 years old and really hasn't been showing much of late. When he faced Philip Hergovich back end of 2019, looked like a bit of a deer in the headlines, ended up getting taken out in a few rounds. So I expect something similar in this one. Diminishing returns here with Eric Molina, but there is some name recognition from fighting him. And Fabio Wardley, actually after this fight was announced a number of weeks back, said um, that there was no easy test, that sort of stuff in his career. But I think he might have been uh, maybe just bigging this one up a little bit more than it really is worth because there is diminishing value, as I say, with Eric Molina these days because he is a husk of a husk now. But for his 11th pro fight, look, it's fine. It is what it is. He's going to go in here on a card with some good exposure and he's going to get a stoppage probably inside three or four rounds. That's really what this is. It is going to be something to help build his profile, build his resume, but it's not like he's really going to be tested in this one. Those tests are still to come. So there is, um, in terms of the progression, you know, not too much out of this one, but I don't mind it. It is what it is at the stage of his career. He will be on to bigger and better things. But uh, Fabio Wardley to get the stoppage in this one, no doubt. Then we move on to the first of uh, two Frank Warren shows. Uh, so a double header, one on the Friday, one on the Saturday in the United Kingdom. So David Adelaide is going to be on the first one facing a two and eight journeyman Mladen Manev. So really haven't seen this uh, two and eight journeyman uh, fight before, but um, given Adelaide is an up and coming prospect, very raw, but very good tools and seemingly developing all the time. You know, this is only headed one way, but and I guess this is the thing with all three of these fights, not particularly great fights for any of them, but we get to see where they're at. Fabio Wardley is an exciting talent. We'll get to see where he's at. David Adelaide is an exciting talent. He's obviously um, not as far along in his career, and he's more of a project of, at this stage. 24 years old, there's a lot of sort of room to grow in terms of his skills and ability in the next couple of years, and he is going to be a project. So, you know, at this point, it is what it is in terms of the opponent front. He could be facing more of the same for the next year or two as they gradually step him up. So as long as we see some of the progression in the ring that's the main thing at this point but I like what I've seen from David Adelaide so far and from the first fight to his fourth fight clearly there has been some development and I think he's being a bit more patient you know he's picking his shots better and it's clear he's very raw but he is going to go somewhere in the heavyweight division so prediction on this one, it is just a six rounder. It's not going to go the distance I wouldn't have thought. But, um, you know, stranger things have happened, but clearly going to be a David Adelaide win. And then we move on to Nathan Gorman. And this is a sort of interesting sort of fight because um, very low key in terms of Gorman, one, being back in the ring, but two, there was a late change in opponents. So about six weeks ago, it was announced that he was going to be facing a former cruiserweight, Chris Dizan, Chris Desich, uh, But then at some point, it's changed to Pavel Sauer. So that's listed on BoxRec as his opponent. And Sauer, he's been seen uh, getting stopped by a couple of other guys uh, um, Philip Hergovich being one, uh, stopped him in a round. Then you had Huey Fury, stopped Sauer in three rounds. And also Jermaine Franklin beat Pavel Sauer, and uh, that went all 10 rounds. And based on, I think, Jermaine Franklin hits harder than Nathan Gorman, who does seemingly not have um, elite level power. Uh, I think this one could potentially go the distance. So this is actually listed for 10 rounds. I wouldn't be surprised if it did go 10 rounds. 
But at this point, given some of, um, you know, Nathan Gorman's still on a rebuild, he's coming back and his last performance against Richard Larty didn't look fantastic. He was out of shape, 273 pounds. Sure, there had been some um, well sort of publicized and documented um, issues that he'd had in his personal life in the sort of period before that fight. And he was coming back to the ring. He'd lost a whole load of weight, but clearly he still wasn't quite right, quite sort of match fit as it were. Uh, 273 pounds wasn't a good look. And he sort of labored to that decision. After about the third round, you sort of wanted it to be over because it was starting to become a procession and not a very good looking spectacle and actually maybe we will see something similar here with uh, Sauer because it sort of seems that Gorman looks pretty good for about three or four rounds and then just sort of tapers off and um, sort of puts in a workmanlike effort ends up going the rounds but given there has been some inactivity since the loss to um, Daniel Dubois this will only be his second fight since that 2019 loss maybe the rounds is going to be good for him and if he does come in better shape he's um, you know better condition than 273 and he looks a little bit sort of slicker in there not as labored um, because I guess in terms of Lati and Sauer they're probably much of a muchness really in terms of skill and ability uh, Sauer, he can hang around um, if he wants to be there, and he shows a little bit of, of ambition at times, but he has been hurt, stopped, and um, even Jermaine Franklin dropped him in this fight. So it'd be interesting to see what Gorman can do. But I'm not necessarily outraged at the opponent or anything like that. I think, you know, at this stage, Gorman needs to get back in there, show some ambition, put on a good performance. He is due for a good performance. It's sort of one of these cases that earlier in his career sort of seemingly you know promised so much and people had really high raps on him but he's sort of failing to pan out so far it's not to say that he can't keep developing and can't um, make a better fist of it and prove a lot of people wrong but at this point you know you have to question his where his ceiling is at but you know I think some rounds and activity this will be good for this fight but after this, you'd hope to see a better level of opponent because Pavel Sart really was what, a top 80, top 100 guy at best. Anyway, what do you make of it all? David Adelaide, Nathan Gorman and Fabio Wardley return this weekend. Drop a comment loud and often. Hit like, hit subscribe, follow me on Twitter. Boxing underscore squared. I'm out.